<clears throat> Robin Bush was the four-year-old daughter of George and Barbara Bush. Uh, a very beautiful child, a beloved child, loved dearly by her mom and dad. In fact, it's the next picture I think you see in a moment. Uh, like I said, just amazing curly uh, red hair. Uh, it was also uh, a very, uh, she was very special to the family. But one day she began to feel unwell. They took her to the doctor. He drew blood, tests were run. And in a short order of time, she tested positive for leukemia. Back in the day, uh, treatment, while it was available, was it still experimental. They had to put her in a hospital. They did treatment, but the child kept getting weaker and sicker. On a Sunday afternoon, or actually a Sunday evening, on October the 11th, 1953, Robin Bush died. From the time of diagnosis of leukemia, that wounded the heart of her mom and dad, because no parent wants to hear that. When she died, it broke their heart into pieces. The Bible tells us, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. That's Psalm 34, 18. And Isaiah foresaw the coming of the Messiah, that is the Savior, Jesus. And He is the ultimate helper and healer of broken hearts. And none of us in this room are immune or exempt from a broken heart. Whatever the cause may be, some of you may have a broken heart uh, even tonight, and there is good news. Jesus can heal that broken heart. As we look at our text tonight, we continue in our series from Isaiah 61. It's called Making It Personal. It's not just about what Jesus is doing, although that's the ultimate thing, but what Jesus can do to us and then what Jesus can do through us as a church, as we, we talk about helping and healing the brokenhearted. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Two points I'd like to share with you tonight. And that is, number one, healing the brokenhearted involves Binding up. Now that word binding simply means put a bandage on it. When you have a wound, okay, you put a bandage on it, most times that bandage can stop the bleeding. It can prevent infection. It can also protect that wound and promote healing so that that wound will get better and eventually you may just have a scar. Or if you have a broke bone. They set it and then they wrap it, usually eventually in a plaster cast. Why? So it's not going to move and so that that bone will heal uh, and be mended. And what is true medically is true spiritually as well. Dr. Ellicott says it this way, it is a bandage placed on the hurt and the wounds of the human heart by the great physician whose name is Jesus. And you may be thinking, well, that's nice, Brother Moore. Uh, but how does that apply to us in this room tonight? And I'm glad you think that question. I'm glad that you're, quote, asking that question. Because if we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then we're supposed to live like Jesus, act like Jesus, speak like Jesus. We are to have a ministry just like Jesus where we can help those who have a broken heart. And we do that, first of all, by being a presence in their life. And then being a listening ear to them, loving them like Jesus, as they are, where they are, without judging them, and then helping them as we are able, and it is appropriate to do so, as God has given us resources. Then we earn the right to be heard. Then we are able to pray with them, pray for them, and therefore we in essence, live our testimony as we begin to share the gospel with them. Whether they've never been saved, and that's an opportunity. That broken heart means they may be tender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Or if they are a Christian, sometimes they just need reminding of who they are in Christ, even when their heart has been broken to pieces. Well, there's a second point, but as you think about that, 
Let me challenge you with this thought. In Psalm 147, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Have you, are you willing for the Lord Jesus to use you tonight and tomorrow and beyond to be his hands, his feet, and his mouthpiece, helping to put a bandage on those wounded, broken hearts so that they can begin to heal? Because God can use you right where you are, just as you are. But there's a second thought I want to share with you. Healing the brokenhearted not only means building, uh, binding up or bandaging, it means building up. You know, <clears throat> broken, wounded hearts need rebuilding. When you are helpless or you feel helpless, when you have lost everything or something that is near and dear and precious to you, it can make you feel vulnerable. And when you're vulnerable, that can make you feel very afraid, anxious, or even angry, or all of the above. You may feel like you have no control over the situation, uh, that there is nobody who cares, nobody uh, who is going to care, that you are not only helpless, you are hopeless. And, and especially if you have lost something that is precious to you, you may even feel worthless. Well, there's good news. You see, your sense of dignity and self-worth is not based on how your heart is feeling or what happens to your heart. Your sense of dignity and self-worth is found in Jesus Christ who loves you and gave himself for you. As we look at Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, for those who are brokenhearted, bowed down and stooped over and the weight of the world is on their shoulders. He says, come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's a promise. That's a guarantee. You say, well, Brother Charles, that's good but now how does, how does that apply to us tonight? It's like this. As Christians we can help build up the brokenhearted and the wounded by our presence and participation with them. Just simply showing them that we love them and we care. In fact, as we do so, we may gain the opportunity to identify with them, connect with them where, where they are in their moment of grief, maybe on the worst day or the worst night or the worst moment of their life. And when we do so by the grace of God, because all this has to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, then guess what? We show them Jesus is real. And Jesus makes a difference. We get to be the hands, the feet, and the voice of Jesus to the brokenhearted of the world. So our invitation is a little bit different than we normally do. You know, other times I would have you come to the altar and pray or, or such. I have two uh, things that I want you to think about doing. First of all, I would like for you to pray, especially young people, children, but adults too. Be willing to be used of Jesus to put that bandage on the broken, wounded hearts and build them up in the name of Jesus. And then number two, if you have a question about your salvation, see me. See me tonight. Don't leave this campus until you have seen me or Brother Stephen or Brother Toby or Brother Gary or any of the adults. We will be honored to share that gospel with you. If you have some other issue, come see us. But at this point, I'm going to dismiss you to your uh, youth uh, group up in the room. Children, you go where you go as we will prepare for a time of specialized prayer, praying for uh, the those who are in the harm's way with Hurricane Milton those who are in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. By His grace, go with God.